And I'm talking to... Councillor Tracy Moore. So how many people do you think have come to see this morning's event in Southborough? That's a good question. I think that there were uh, at times it was very, very crowded, particularly around the models. I reckon we probably had around 50 or so people come over the last couple of hours. And so out of those 40 or 50 people, how many have been really enthusiastic about the idea of a theatre and told you they're going to be there every weekend? <laughs> I think lots of people were very enthusiastic, both for and against the project, and, and some quite neutral in just gathering information. A lot of people I've spoken to really can see um, and have experienced themselves the limitations of the Assembly Hall Theatre and are very excited about the possibility of a fit-for-purpose 21st century theatre that could bring you know, better quality programming to mm -hmm. Tunbridge Wells. So the referendum that was done locally, obviously it was only 15%, I think, of, of people, but on the other hand, there was 80% of the view that it was just too expensive. What, what do you say to them? Well... I think the referendum that was held locally in Southborough, there was about a 12% um, turnout, and you're quite right. I mean, more people voted against the proposals than for. I think the difficulty is with anything distilling it down to yes, no, black, white, binary, um, is that you're not looking at the nuance of the argument. And it's not 77 million or nil. Um, to do nothing still has quite an extraordinary cost associated with it to refurbish the town hall and the assembly hall. And, and how you, much would that involve us borrowing? Um, well, potentially, um, we're talking about 40 to 50 million pounds, potentially, of refurbishing uh, the town hall and the assembly hall to increase the seating capacity of the assembly hall. And the problem I have with that, to be honest, is that you're significantly borrowing and spending and then having buildings that are still compromised. I mean, the Assembly Hall Theatre would still have a fly tower too low, wings that are too small, a stage that is too small for touring productions to come. So then we'd have more seats to sell and still not be able to improve uh, the, the quality of the programming. So what have you been saying to people then who, who say, well, what are we going to get for the £77 million debt? Well, I think there, this is you know, a cultural investment in Tunbridge Wells, and it is very much a place-making investment. I think that you know, what we're trying to deliver is you know, an improved public square and an improved entrance to Calvary Grounds, and you know, wider, more welcoming, and bringing the park more towards Mount Pleasant, to invite you in. Um, you know, a new, a publicly accessible roof terrace above the Civic Centre with new paths leading to that, a nice, tranquil place to enjoy the beautiful views of Calverley Grounds, and also a theatre, 1,200 seats, state of the art, that you know, touring productions like Royal Shakespeare Company, National Theatre, Ambassador Theatre Group might like to bring their shows to. And, you know, I think that Tunbridge Wells absolutely deserves, uh, you know, that quality programming and, you know, a building fit for the 21st century. So if people come to you and say, look, uh, you know, in times of old, perhaps the theatre would have drawn in perhaps the majority of people in, in a borough. In this day and age, lots of people just prefer to stay at home or else they don't have the money to spend on a £25 theatre ticket. This is never going to involve me. Why should I be paying £65 in interest on my council tax to pay for this? Isn't, aren't I paying subsidising someone else's activities? Well, I think there are a couple of things that I would say to that. I mean, one, one of the drivers for me is to try to make culture more accessible to members of the public and to our residents and visitors. And, you know, going to the West End in London is a very expensive, you know, often, you know, event for people, maybe once a year because it's so expensive. And regional theatre, you know, by its very nature, is more affordable uh, than going up to London in terms of transportation costs and ticket costs. But also, even if you don't attend theatre, as a resident of the borough, I think there would be a benefit to you because this is about maintaining Tunbridge Wells' attractiveness so that it ensures that it is economically prosperous. And as government are incentivizing local councils to stimulate economic growth by allowing us to retain the growth in business rates, that growth is what we would use to fund discretionary and essential services to our residents. So it is in everyone's interest that Tunbridge Wells prospers because that economic growth will have a direct benefit. On, but you on could say that you, you could invest the money in other things like uh, reopening the railway line to Brighton, which would bring <laughs> other people in, or improving the, the bus service so that uh, the roads were less clogged. You, yeah. you, know, you could spend the money well, on, on other things that well, also I, would, would help I think the, there's the, a fundamental the quality of life. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but there's a fundamental misunderstanding by a lot of people about what the different tiers of government, how, what their responsibilities are. 
And the Borough Council is not responsible for highways. Uh, is, that is the County Council. I mean, I, I spoke to some secondary school children a couple of months ago, and they suggested, well, if we're going to borrow this money, spend it on the NHS. But as I'm sure you know, that's central government that, that sets the, the, the budget for the NHS and for the Education Authority. So at local level, one of our responsibilities is economic development. And I believe that it is our duty to try to protect um, you know, the, the cultural offer in Tunbridge Wells, but also to stimulate economic But, but, tran but transport is, is part of your remit in, in, in the borough to improve the efficiency of transport. And, and most people would probably say their biggest number one problem is the incredible inefficiency of, of all the traffic jams. Well, again, like I said to you, actually, the Highways Authority is Kent County Council. And we work together in the Joint Transportation Board to try to come up with some solutions to, you know, uh, traffic and also to improve sustainable transport methods. But I, I believe genuinely that a theatre opposite the train station and all of those bus stops in front of the Great Hall is one of the most sustainable locations to have a theatre. And do you think in, in the longer run this will pay for itself? I mean, will, will the, the theatre require an ongoing subsidy as well as obviously the, the money that, 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 that council taxpayers will be paying in, mm. in interest? I mean, is, is the figure of about five million years that accurate? Or? No, it's no. not. I mean, the, um, what we're assuming is that the um, subsidy for the new theatre would be £350,000 a year in perpetuity. That's the assumption. And, and what is I, it at the moment? No, well, this, they just finished. Sorry. So that, I think, is a very prudent assumption because the business case for the new theatre suggests that we could be subsidy-free in year six. The theatre subsidy at the Assembly Hall is £250,000 a year. Um, and at the moment. At the moment, yes. And uh, truthfully, I think that there is a very real risk that over the next decade if we don't proceed with the new theatre, that, that that subsidy at the Assembly Hall will probably climb as we continue to struggle to get shows to be able to fit in that, in that building. So there's a prospect of subsidy-free with a new theatre, but I don't think there's any prospect of subsidy-free at the Assembly Hall. Do you, I mean, do you think it's possible to bring in a private sector? I mean, it, it, you know, if you think this is genuinely something that will bring people in... I mean, isn't that one way around it, bringing in private well, sector money, well, that's private sector risk? I, about uh, a week and a half ago, I took about 20 councillors to the Marlow in Canterbury, for kind of a fact-finding mission. And we had the opportunity to meet with the um, theatre director of the, of the Marlow, as well as um, the chief executive of the council and members of the business community to, to talk about the impact of the Marlow um, on their local economy. And what they explained to us is that um, once they had planning permission for the rebuild of the Marlow seven years ago, they uh, had a fundraising expert come in to develop a fundraising strategy, and then they approached businesses and then individuals to help raise money. And they raised over four and a half million pounds from the local community to help fund their new theatre. And it is absolutely my, my hope that we could do the same in Tunbridge Wells. Our 77 million of net debt is assuming no external funding. Again, I think a very prudent assumption because we don't have any of that in the bag at the moment. However, I would absolutely intend to, if we proceeded with the project, to also follow Marla's um, example and try to have some external funding um, as well. So there are two buildings. I mean, would it be possible just to invest in a new theatre, which, as you say, could end up being financially viable over the course of the de next decade or so? Do we really need new offices for council members. I mean, the current, current council chamber is perfectly adequate for having planning <laughs> meetings. I've, be, I've been to them. Why does the, the council uh, staff need new offices? Well, one of the challenges uh, that we face is that the town hall is 40,000 square feet and the council are going to take about 12,000 in the new civic centre. The town hall is just far too big for our needs. And we've looked at 60-year life cycle costs of a new office for the council versus refurbishing the town hall versus doing the, you just rent out versus, the rooms you don't versus need? doing the bare minimum, which is you know just the structural um, what's in the structural survey. And actually, 60-year life cycle costs. The most expensive option is refurbishing the town hall and the council staying. So I, I don't. So you're think saying the roof is leaking at the moment? Or, there or? are a number of challenges uh, mm. and, and uh, maintenance issues that need to be done for the town hall. But that's not the only reason. I think. What we're trying to deliver is actually this place-shaping project. And then the buildings have been conceived as a pair, where they both face one another, they both provide public benefit, the theatre and the new civic centre, and they also address the park. And Historic England and Design Southeast have given us some feedback, and what they have said is that these two buildings that provide public benefit and address the park could potentially heal the western edge of Calverley Grounds and that the be public benefit could possibly outweigh the harm of 
building at the edge of a, of a list of parks. So, you know, I think it is about, you know, the, the new public square, the, the office, the theatre. It, it is kind of a whole package. But you wouldn't consider perhaps compromising and spending less money and perhaps just simply refurbishing and renting out surplus space in the town hall and just going ahead with a the, with the theatre? Well, I've kind of tried to already answer that question. Mm. No, in other words. <laughs> no, we have. I just, I don't think that stacks up. I think, and I also am not convinced that one building and not the pair would necessarily get planning permission because they are kind of, you know, conceived as a pair. Mm -hmm. So you're confident that it'll, because it's going to go, be voted on in December, ne next month? Are you confident it'll it'll go through? I think this project deserves to succeed on its merits. I think it, it is an investment in the future of the town, um, and I think it is our duty to provide civic leadership, and, and I, I, I genuinely believe it, it should succeed. But I don't count my chickens. We'll see what happens on the 6th of December.